bless God for your life. Thank you for coming to church. Even though the weather is beautiful, I know in North America, nobody goes to church when the weather is good. Turn to your neighbor and say, thank you for coming. Turn to the next person and say, your life will never be the same. Today we, we are going to conclude our three-month series on how to hear God's voice. And the package is ready. If you want to order the package, let me encourage you to get a, cop a copy of the package. It has three months worth of sermons. These are things that you don't hear a lot these days in churches, how to hear God's voice. Very important. I want to encourage you, get a copy, share with a friend or a family, buy it to, for somebody, say, look, bless it. As you know, we, we just want you to cover the cost of production, like the CDs, and you can get a CD or DVD or whichever you want. Just pay something little and let's cover the cost. But most important, we want the word to go out. The church needs to hear this. Today, as we finish up, I want to talk about dreams. Somebody say dreams. It's also another subject that we don't hear a lot about, but everybody goes through. Dreams is one of the ways that God speaks to us. If you can recall, when we started this series, I said, I believe the second Sunday, I said, God speaks to us in seven ways. And one of the ways God speaks to us is through dreams. Dreams. And today, I simply want to just whet your appetite. I don't have the time to go deep into it. This is a whole series of dreams. But I want to give you an introduction, and I want you to go home and study the Bible on dreams. Just take a concordance and look at all the various instances where God gave dreams to people and ask God to speak to you and minister to you on that. So today, I want to again use a very simple outline as we look at this introduction doctrine aspect of this subject. We're going to look at the reality of dreams. dreams. The fact that we all dream. Everybody dreams. Sometimes you dream and you don't even know you've dreamt. We're going to talk about the reasons why God gives us dreams, the purpose of dreams. Then how do you respond to dreams? When you dream, a good dream, a bad dream, a pizza dream, how do you respond to it? Every dream needs a response. If you don't respond to dreams, it can affect you. It can bring good or bad. And so, are you ready? Take your notes and let's go. I believe God is going to speak to somebody. God is going to speak to somebody. Let's start with the first one, the reality of dreams. If you don't mind, I would like to start with a definition. According to the Free Encyclopedia, a dream is a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that usually occur involuntarily in the mind Drawing certain stages of sleep. Certain stages of sleep. We all do dream. And we know that the average person, according to scientists, dream about three to five, have three to five dreams in the night. If you hear somebody say, I don't dream, it's because they can't remember it. And a dream can stretch from anywhere from a few seconds to half an hour, and those of you who enjoy your dreams, sometimes it can even go to an hour, an hour of just pure dreams, snoring and enjoying images, Psychologic, psychological movies. You're in the movie theater. But as we talk about the reality, really, dreams come from three major sources. The first source is our own self. Somebody say self. When we dream, most of it comes from just our own self. According to the book of Ecclesiastes, for a dream comes through much activity, your thought life, the things that you have been thinking about, the things that you have been worrying about, the things that have burdened you. Most of the time as you go to lie down, they begin to replay. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there is also vanity. Sometimes all that many of us we have is just a, our dreams are simply a reflection of what we are going through in our emotions, the worries, the anxieties, the fears, and it goes, it transfers into the night. 
And sometimes, too, it depends on what we eat. We, we ate before we slept. I call that the pizza. Some of you, when you, you, you eat pizza before you sleep, you have some wild dreams. And, so, and when you get those dreams, please don't come to me for interpretation. Some of them, Pastor Sam, there was snake were chasing me, and then they turned around. I was chasing the snake. Then I turned around, and they chased. Look, those are pizza dreams. Keep it to yourself, you know. Keep it to yourself. And I'm going to show you how to know when the dream comes from God and when it's just coming from the pizza or the, the hot dogs you ate the night, the day before. The second, the second place is that dream can come to us, come from the devil. Satan can give you dreams. And we know that we, the mind is the battlefield of the devil. And so he attacks the mind both day and night. And you have to understand that it is a place where he can, he wants to cause us to stumble. Um, Psalm 91 tells us that the enemy does not let in, whether it's day or night. He said, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Even when you are lying down, the enemy is attacking you. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays wait at noonday. What is the Bible saying? 24-7, you are under attack. And that is why the Bible says you have to guard your mind. You have to put on the helmet of salvation. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are of good report, you have to think on these things because the mind is where our problem begins. God also would like to use your mind to speak to you. There are certain times you can have a dream and you wake up in the morning and you can feel condemned. The enemy can put thoughts of condemnation in your head, thoughts of accusation in your head, sometimes simply thoughts of depression. Can I get a witness? You have a dream and you wake up from the dream and you are simply feeling depressed. That type of dream is not from God, it's from the devil. And when you wake up in the morning from a dream that is oppressing you, or sometimes you can feel heaviness in your room. You got to go on warfare and take care of that situation. Are you hearing me? You don't just wake up and try to shrug it off. No, spiritual things are spiritually designed. You need to deal with it. Otherwise, it will follow you throughout the day. Sometimes some of the dreams the enemy will put in your head can be very tor tormenting. Sometimes enemy can even put a dream that can bring division between you and somebody. And I'm going to come to that in a second. Somebody turned to a friend and said, you, I saw you in my dream. You were attacking me. You were attacking me. And I want to know, I will attack you before you attack me. Listen, don't take some dreams literally. The devil can use somebody's face. So if I show up in your dream trying to kill you, please, I'm not a killer. <laughs> there are certain people that don't talk to people because they have seen them in a dream. You. I don't talk to you. Why? I'm not talking to you again. I saw you. It is the devil. God has, is not the altar of confusion and division. God will not bring somebody in your dream just to bring destruction to you or cause that kind of thing. But we'll get to that in a moment. But you have to understand what the enemy does. Sometimes he can even put hatred on you. And I was talking to a brother the other day a few weeks ago, and I knew exactly where this dream was coming from. He said, Pastor, I had this dream, and some of you may have that kind of dream, where he said, I woke up, and I was sleeping with this woman. And I came to church, and I saw this woman. I've never talked to this woman before. All of a sudden, I'm feeling attractive to this woman. I'm a married man. I said, that is a spirit. Don't even talk to that woman, because the enemy is just using her image to destroy you. He said, I woke up from that dream, and I was feeling very lustful. What do you do? You stand up. You take your authority and you come against the enemy, you direct that dream back to where it comes from, and you deal with that spirit, because if you don't, you will manifest it. Some of you know what I'm talking about? In these very areas, the enemy can put images in your head and then begin to manifest. And so as a child of God, you have to understand. It comes from yourself, it can come from Satan, and it can also come from the spirit. Fortunately, God also speaks to us through dreams. You see, the devil is a liar. He wants to block that medium. 
It's a beautiful medium if that medium can be open for God to speak to. When you, when you go, when you study the Bible throughout the scriptures, you see God speaking to men and women through dreams. He appeared to Abraham in a dream. He appeared to Joseph in a dream. Even in the New Testament, God is speaking to Joseph. He's speaking to Mary. God even speaking to Nebuchadnezzar. God is a God's chosen channel by which he can minister to people. And so if, if the mind is one of the ways that God speaks to you, let me encourage you to sanctify your mind. Clean that channel so that God can work his purposes through that channel. Amen? So th those are the three areas that, and when we come to talk about how to respond to dream, when you wake up from a terrible dream, you have to first ask yourself, where is this coming from? Is it just from me, from the devil, or from God? And then I will show you that just before we close, when we talk about the response. So you have to understand where the three major areas. Okay, now let's talk about the reasons. Why will God give us dream? Why will he speak to us through dreams? Number one, because he wants to show us his will. We see in the Bible, God is speaking to men and women and causing them to enter into their purpose. God can give you your calling, your assignment through a dream. And typical example is Joseph. You see that in Genesis 37. God gave Joseph assignment, his mission, his purpose through a dream. God can tell you what he's called you to do through a dream. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him, him more than ever. He said, listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundles stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. God is telling this man, I'm going to raise you. I'm going to anoint you. You're going to be a prime minister. And people will come and bow to you. That is your calling, Joseph. He's a 17-year-old boy, but God is already giving him his mission, his assignment. God can call you and direct you through a dream. Are you still following me? Remember when Joseph was even in, the, in prison, one of the chief, chief cup bearer came to him and said, I had this dream and I was serving Pharaoh a cup. And, and, and Joseph said, God is going to restore you to your original assignment. Very soon you are going to be released and you are going to come back to what you were doing before. You are going to serve Pharaoh again. That cup symbolizing assignment, your mission, your purpose is going to be restored to you. God speak to us. Even Jacob, you remember the story? He dreamed that there was a ladder into heaven. Angels ascending and descending. That is when God called, came to Jacob. He said, Jacob, I am going to anoint you. If you read the rest of the story, I'm going to make you a father of nations. Nations shall come out of your loins and I'm going to bless your children. This is my mission and purpose for your life. Are you still following me? So God speaks to us through, uh, he speaks to us because he wants to show us his will. Then God also wants to give us wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge, right or wrong. Sometimes we don't know where to go. We have to make certain decisions. Sometimes God wants to tell you, take the right or take to the left. He wants to give you wisdom. And he will show up in the dream to tell you what to do. Now you have to, let me give an example with Matthew. Remember the story of when Jesus was born. Every direction God gave the parents all came through a dream. In fact, Ma Matthew chapter 2 is full of it. God will show up in the dream. Stay here. Don't stay here. Go. Get up. It's time. Move. All through a dream. God can give you a direction. The Bible says, after the wise men were gone, even the wise men themselves, God showed to them a dream. He said, don't go back in the dream. Don't go back to who? To Herod, because he had a bad plan. But go and find the baby. After the men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up. Flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay here until I tell you to return. Because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him through a dream when he was sleeping. Again, the Bible said God came back to Joseph. When he died, when Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. 
He said, get up. The angel said, why? Take the child and his mom back to the land of Israel because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. God can give us direction. Sometimes we can be burdened and worried and as we sleep at night. In fact, yesterday I met with a brother and he was telling me that at work they were giving him some problems and he was making a decision to make an official complaint. And at night God told him, don't do it. Don't make that complaint. And he found out that later that the, his bosses were waiting for the complaint to fire him. God told him, stay right, right there, don't say anything. And they were surprised. And they wanted to encourage him to do it. They said, no, I'm not doing that. God can give you directions. And I'll show you how sometimes you realize is this from God. Because when God speaks to you, when you wake up, there's going to be a peace about it. There's going to be a stirring in your spirit. There's going to be a burden. You know for sure that God has spoken to you. Amen? The third reason why God, God will speak to us is to give us a warning to to advance, something is coming, and God wants you to prepare for it. And I want to give you the famous one. Pharaoh had a dream. You remember the dream? It was an interesting dream. And he had fat cows and lean cows. And the, the interesting thing about that dream was that the, the, the lean cows swallowed the fat cows. And he was like, this doesn't make sense. Fat man swallowed the lean one. And then he had another dream, very similar, concerning grain. And then when he woke up, the Bible said his spirit stayed within him. He knew right away, this is not just any dream. Sometimes, too, it's possible God can give you a dream and you can remember it. Now you can go back to even Nebuchadnezzar. He knew there was a dream, but, I mean, my wife had a dream recently. Couldn't remember it, but she knew it from God. He said, God, if this is from you, I want to have the same dream again. And God gave her the dream again. Sometimes we, we, we know that God is trying to speak to us, but in the process of waking up, something happened. And, and Nebuchadnezzar said, I dreamt something. First, I want somebody to tell me what I dreamt, and then to, to give me the interpretation. Why? Because I know that this is a very significant dream. Are you still following me? It's very important. So Joseph comes to um, Pharaoh in Genesis chapter 41, and he said to him, both of Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God is telling Pharaoh in advance what he's about to do. The seven healthy cows and the seven healthy he heads of grain, he said, both represent seven years of prosperity. The seven thin, scrawny cows that came up later and the 17 heads of grain weeded by the east wind represent seven years of famine. You know what he's saying? He's saying something is going to come. There are certain things that is not by, for prayer. There are certain things you have to take action. God can give you a dream and say, you are going to lose your job. Start saving. But some of you know what you will do if you have a dream like that. In the name of Jesus, I bind it, I bind it, I bind it, I bind it. With fire, fire, fire. Sometimes it's not fire. Sometimes it's just common sense. Yes, yes, Joseph could have said, you know what, let's pray against the famine. It shall not be a portion. In the name of Jesus, every famine that is coming will stop you by the east wind. No. There are certain situations, nothing can stop it. Can I talk to somebody? There are certain storms that will be coming to your life. God is simply telling you to get ready for it. You can bind all the binding you can. The storm will still come. There are some storms you can say, peace be still, and they will stop. And there are certain storms you just have to go through it. I know, I know. Nobody wants to go through storm. So most of you, 75% of your time, you are binding storms. Storms are good for you. Okay, I got three amens. Let me say it again. I say storms are good for you. So sometimes when the storm comes, you just simply have to pray and say, Lord, what is my response to this storm? Is it a storm that I can speak? That is why it is so important as a child of God, you know how God speaks, so that you are, you are not running around everywhere. Is it something, is this a, a matter of prayer or is it a matter of wisdom? Is it a matter of preparation or is it a matter of fight? It's not everything that is a fight. There are some things you have to fight. So God will give you a witness in your spirit. God will say, no, I'm sending this to warn you to get ready. Maybe you may need to get a second job or maybe you may need to do A, B, and C. Get ready. It's called wisdom. God has the ability to stop certain things in our life, but sometimes he allows us to go through it. Are you still following me? So, so Joseph said, this is what we're going to do. The family is going to come. Let us enter into savings. 
we have to put something aside for the next seven years because something is going to happen and it's going to erase all the prosperity. All the savings that you have put aside is going to be eaten up. So let's start. So they began to put up silos and they started to save and that saved Egypt. And all the neighborhood, everywhere there was famine. Everybody was affected. Even Jacob and his children have to come back to Joseph to ask for food. Just because somebody in a dream got a revelation. Sometimes, obviously, God will give you a dream for warfare. Now you can fight. There are certain dreams that is simply say, hey, get up. Look, there are certain dreams you get, you don't need to wait for three days. As soon as you get, and my wife likes that. Sometimes I will say, look, you got the, you got the dream, but pray. And she said, you want the dream too, so let's get up and pray together. I say, aye. <laughs> See, I, God doesn't speak to me through dream, but God does speak to her. And then in the middle of the night, 3 a.m., he says, Sam, get up. We need to pray. I said, why? I saw this ABC. There are some prayers which is time sensitive. Sometimes that which you have seen a dream could occur in the morning. And you need to avert it. Right. You need to stop it. You need to direct it somewhere. And you wake up in the morning because God is saying, I remember when I was about 18 years old, God, I'm, I'll never forget. God gave me a dream, and in the dream, he was talking to me about Bangladesh. I said, what is Bangladesh? I thought maybe it's a Holy Ghost something. So I woke up and I said, God, whatever it is, Bangladesh, I receive it. <laughs> I receive it. I receive Bangladesh. It sounded like a Greek name or an Hebrew term. Later I realized that Bangladesh, he said, I don't think you want God to fill you with Bangladesh because at that time, Bangladesh was going through a very terrible time. And God showed me in the dream that there's going to be a flood and he wants me to pray. So I gathered together my prayer was and we started to pray. There was a flood, but what they expected, it, to, it, was, it was going to destroy the whole place. And the flood just came and just, just simply washed away the place. And God said, that is why I revealed this to you because I wanted to pray. Pray for the flood that is coming. Pray for its effect on that land. When God gives you a warning, a revelation, do it right away. It may even sometimes mean that you need to fast and pray. Cancel all your lunch appointments. Look, I'm sorry we can't meet. I need to deal with something. Some of you, you know what I'm talking about. God has given you a revelation and you have delayed and it has been very costly. When God shows you something at night, on a Sunday night, it's because God wants to deal with it on a Sunday night. There's a reason why he didn't give it to you on a Monday or a Tuesday. So don't delay. So when you receive that type of revelation, you got to rise up and start fighting. How do I know? You can sense it in your spirit. And I've taught, taught you how to know when God is speaking to you, how the devil is speaking to you, and how yourself. You know that. If not, go back to those sermons. You can tell that this is coming from God. You can get the witness in your spirit that God wants you to fight. God wanted to pray. Something is happening. Sometimes it may not refer to the person. And I'll come to that in a second. You know, um, when you're interpreting, sometimes I find people write books on dreaming. And you see, dreams can also be culturally sensitive. You can't have one dream in North America and interpret the same way you interpret a dream, say, in Malaysia. Let me give you an example. In North America, when, when, when you have a, a dream that a dog is following you, it's a good thing. But in Africa, <laughs> when God gives you a dream about a dog following him, it's not good. You have to fight. You get what I'm saying? So you, you, I don't go, dogs, it depends on the context where God gives you the dream. And sometimes, and I'll come to that in a second, how, how to interpret some of these dreams. And don't run, oh, I know exactly what it is. The devil is after you. No, 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 God doesn't work like that. When you look through the scriptures about interpretation of dreaming, each and every one was given different interpretation. And so to write a book and say, when you dream and see light, it means this, it's foolishness. Different context, God speaks to us. It's like pictures where somebody can say, I saw you under a mango tree and blah, blah, blah. You take this, that same picture, you put a different context, it will mean something totally different. In other words, God will speak to us based on our context and 
our understanding so are quiet on me. All right. So God will give you a dream to cause you to fight. And then the final one is sometimes God uses a dream to witness. Jerome the Great, a theologian, actually became a Christian. He translated the Bible into the Latin. He became a Christian because God revealed to him in a dream. He saw heaven. Some of you are Christians because God gave you a revelation of hell. Can I get a witness? You didn't see heaven. Heaven will move you. Hell. You saw fire. People were burning. You're like, you wake up in the morning and you were looking for a pastor. God who used dreams to bring people. Most of the con conversion that is happening in the Muslim world is through dreams. They are seeing Isa. They are seeing Jesus. Jesus is revealing himself. In other words, dreams can be a witnessing tool. This is what the Bible says in Job chapter 33. Exactly that. Watch this. For God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in dreams, in visions of the night. Visions of the night, obviously dreams. When deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. And the Bible says he whispers in their ears and terrifies them with a warning. Don't you like that? Sometimes God will speak to you and it can, it, it can terrify you. Say, Wake up and pray. Or God can give you a revelation and say, repent. He makes them turn from doing wrong. He keeps them from pride. Now listen to this. He protects them from the grave, from crossing over to the river of death. Something terrible is coming. God wants to deliver us from hell, and it sometimes he'll give us visions and dreams at night. Depending on your capacity, your understanding, he will give you a vision about heaven or about hell or a vision about himself. And all these Muslims, um, there's a book out there, if you can find it, it's called Finding Allah and what? Knowing Jesus, something like, just Google it on Amazon, Finding Allah. And, pardon me? Se serving Allah for finding Jesus, where God actually has revealed himself to people in the mosque as they were praying. And there are people who have become converts of Christ. They still go to the mosque, but they're praying to Jesus. God can use dreams to bring witness to him. All right. Now let's, go let's get to the meat of it. The response. So now we know where dreams come from. We know the purposes of dreams. The reason God gives a dream. How do you respond to a dream? How do you respond to the dream? First and foremost, I want you to start with the causation. Causation means find the source. What is causing this dream? Where is this dream coming from? As a child of God, you need to learn to discern the source. The first thing you do when you wake up, there are some dreams you wake up and it's just a dream. There are some dreams you wake up and it, it dawns on you. It really dawns on you. That means that this is a dream that you need to take seriously. And I'll share with you in a second. And you need to ask yourself, is this just myself? Is this the pizza that I ate? Um, or... You know that there's a dream that you need to remember, but you can't remember. You know that God is trying to tell you something, and you are trying to d d discern. And, or is it coming from Satan? In, how do I know that when a dream is coming from Satan, normally you wake up with a dark presence in your room, or a feeling of heaviness and a feeling of oppression. Sometimes some, somebody will come in the morning and say, Pastor, I don't know why I'm feeling so depressed this morning. I said, what did you dream about? And most of the time, it's an attack of the enemy. Where you need to rise up and you declare, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know why I'm feeling like committing suicide. I shall live and not die to declare the glory of God. Satan, I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority over this room, over my house, over my mind, over my spirit. I submit my spirit to God. Father, take over my lips and my ears. And Father, every darkness over me, I come in the name of Jesus. I pull down every stronghold of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every arrow of the enemy directed to my mind and my emotions I come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I destroy it Satan out of my house I command you out 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 of my house in the mighty name of Jesus and I'm here to tell you as a child of God 
you got to learn how to fight. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand all the fiery darts of the enemy. You wake up in the morning, you put on the helmet of salvation. Oh, are you hearing me, somebody? You put on the breastplate of righteousness. You take on the belt of truth. And the Bible said, above all, you take the sword of the Spirit and you begin to pray all manner of prayer. No weapon that you come against, against me will stand. Use the sword. Use the prayer, use the shield, and go into warfare. When was the last time you fought? Fighting is part of our spiritual journey. Jesus taught us how to pray, and at the end, he said, deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from temptation. There is an enemy that is ready to pounce on you. The Bible says like a rolling lion seeking somebody to devour by day and by night, watching you and causing division between you and your wife and the husband and your children because the enemy is trying to discourage you, derail you. We declare a 21-day fight. All of a sudden, there's a big fight at home. All of a sudden, you have this big fight at home because the enemy is trying to derail you. All of a sudden, something goes wrong because he knows that you are ready to fight and he knows what affects you most, what can really discourage you most, what can take you off your mark, and the enemy is going to come. The Bible says he came to Jesus and said, food, 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 because he was hungry. The enemy knows where, where, where your vulnerabilities are, your weaknesses are. If the enemy knows that you like potatoes, he's not going to bring you pizza. If you know that your relationships are very important to you, he's going to use relationship to try and bring you down. Yes, yes. Out of nowhere, your husband is just in a mean mood. Oh, I can get a witness here. <laughs> if you agree with me, just say amen in the spirit. Say amen in the spirit. Don't, don't vocalize it, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. The enemy knows, and you got to learn to fight. And sometimes it's not just yourself or Satan. Sometimes it's coming from God himself. In Genesis, watch it, chapter 41. Now it came to pass in the morning that as his spirit was troubled. Pharaoh had a dream. His spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all his wise men. When he woke up from this dream, something in his spirit was not sitting right. That's how you know God is trying to tell you something. His spirit was troubled. Mm. You may not even remember what you've dreamt about, but you can wake up in the morning and you can feel heavy. Where is this coming from? What is God trying to tell me? Now, once you're able to go to the source, to the causation, the next thing you have to ask for clarity. Okay, now God is trying to tell me something. God, what is the meaning of this? What are you trying to tell me? And when you are trying, you have to understand that the interpretation of dream is from God. When God gives you the dream, go back to the same source and ask for interpretation. And if you, you are not clear about it, you can talk to others. You can talk to a brother or a sister or the pastor or somebody who may have that gifting to say, I've had this dream, it's troubling me, but I don't know where it's coming from. Genesis chapter 40. Again, remember that when Nebuchadnezzar had this dream, nobody could interpret except Daniel. Why? Because he was the only one, the Bible said, the spirit of God was in him. When you have God's spirit within you, God also has given you the ability to understand the revelations that he gives you. Are you following me? Yes. Listen to what they, uh, jo Joseph said. And they said to him, we each have a dream. Now, these were the people in the prison. And there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to them, do not, do, do not interpretation belong to who? God. God is a source. As a Christian, you don't have a dream and you go and see a fetish priest. Or you go and see a false prophet, like many of you we do, where we come from. Or we go and see somebody who is practicing in divination. Or can read your palm. Some of you go to the internet and you, you have all kinds of sources. People say they can interpret your dream. You are exposing yourself to spirits and demons. 
because the interpretation of dreams comes from only God. And the reason why the magicians in Egypt could not interpret because God is the one that gave the dream and God is the one that's going to give the interpretation. If the dream is coming from God, go to God and he will give you. It comes from God. The same thing Daniel said. Daniel said, you people were not able to remember or tell the, the Nebuchadnezzar because it belongs to God. The keys belong to God. And that is why it is very important as a child of God that you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, it begins to manifest these giftings in your life. So some of these dreams are obvious. The moment that you wake up, you, knew, you know exactly what you need to do. Ask God for clarity. Number three, ask God for confirmation. Ask God for confirmation. Sometimes it means that you, you, need, to, you, you need to talk to a friend. If, if this dream is, has some serious uh, consequences, please don't rush into it. We don't want to get to a situation where you are, you are fighting your, your mother-in-law because you saw her in your dream. <laughs> Pastor, I saw her. She was attacking me, and I'm going to ask her to leave the house. No, it's a serious thing. Don't take it lightly. It's possible that it could be somebody else using your mother-in-law's faith. I didn't get an amen. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I know what I saw. I know what I saw. You remember the story. I don't have time to go into it, but when, when Saul was consulting the medium and he was expecting somebody else, and even the medium was shocked because they were expecting a certain face and someone showed up. You know, and, and the enemy can use faces and people, you know. Um, for example, if you dream that I'm giving you money, it doesn't mean that I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you money. It means that God is saying he's going to bless you. Somebody actually came to me and said, Pastor Sam, I saw you in my dream. You're giving money. How much do, do you have? <laughs> and I told him, I'm going to pray for interpretation. Because <laughs> at, at this time, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. It wasn't a small amount. They were, they were looking for a down payment for their mortgage, and they saw me. Hey, God, why? Why? <laughs> Next time, God wants to show, some, show somebody who is really rich and loaded <laughs> and live in West Van, please. Confirmation. And then, finally, commitment. Commitment. In other words, once God, you know the source, causation, you know the interpretation, uh, you've got the clarity, God is confirmed, go into action. Sometimes you need to do something. Sometimes it means you, mean you need to save some money. Maybe God is saying, don't make that decision. Go, don't go to that place. God, whatever it takes to act on it, surrender. That's the final stage. Don't just, okay, God has said. Some of you, sometimes you like to buy time. God, if th this dream is from you, sh show it to me again. God will show it. The next week, God, show it to me again, and God will show you. The next week, one, a time is going to time, come when God will just stop. Because you know what to do. You are just buying time. When once you receive confirmation of that dream, you need to act on it. Dreams may not be, now listen to this, dreams may not be the primary way that God speaks to most of us. But sometimes God has no choice but to use that channel, especially for most of us who are very busy. And God is trying to get our attention. The only way he could get through us is when we are finally lying down and our head is on the pillow and we are dreaming. And that's the only way God may have to speak to us so that he can get our attention. Whichever way, I want to encourage you this morning to keep that channel open. Keep it open. Pray through your dreams. Pray through them and ask God, God, is, is it... Is it is, should I take it seriously? Does it mean anything? You will know it. You will feel it deep down within your spirit. I want you to bow down for a moment and pray about your mind. Pray about your dreams. Some of you may have dreams many, many years ago that you know that something needs to be done about it or you've never known the interpretation of it. And some of you, you keep having the same dream over, over, maybe a period of once or twice a year you have the same dream. 
you need to pray and say, God, what are you trying to tell me? I keep having these dreams over and over again. Or there may be somebody here, God has been trying to talk to you to surrender your life, to repent. Maybe God has spoken to you in a dream that you need to give over your life to him. You have seen without any shadow of doubt that God is real. Today, I want to open the altar. I don't know whom God has spoken today. Is there somebody here this morning that said, Pastor Sam, I would like to surrender my life to Jesus. I would like to have a relationship with God. I don't have this relationship that you are talking about. God does not speak to me. Or maybe you have been going to church, but you haven't fully allowed Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. I want to give you the opportunity. Don't listen to the voice of the devil. If you are here, you know that your life is not right. You know that you're not working with God. It doesn't matter. You may be the only one in this room. But if you are here, don't let this opportunity pass by. I need you to get up and take the most important step in your life. Just walk up here and say, Father, I surrender to you. I need a relationship. I need you to come into my life. You know something? He will forgive your sins. He will wash away every iniquity. You become a brand new person. For the Bible says if anybody is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Will you come? Become born again. Come. He will change your life. Are you ready? I'm going to stand here. I want to love you. I want to pray for you. I want God to change your life. Don't walk out of this place without that change. All right? Okay, let's all stand up on our feet.